Hey guys, before we get to the video, for more tips and tricks in the heating and air industry, please click that subscribe button. Thank you. Hey guys, Joshua Griffin Air and the new HVAC guide. Wanted to do a video for you guys that are homeowners that you don't really know what you're looking at when it comes to duct work. And obviously there are certain, you know, normal things like, you know, there shouldn't be holes in your duct work and it shouldn't be falling apart sort of stuff. But there are times when homeowners ask me, aside from the question, what is the best HVAC brand? Probably the most asked question I get is, how do I know if what I'm looking at is, is what I should be looking at? How do I know if there's a problem with the ductwork? How do I know that the heating and air company is not just telling me that it's good and it's not? And I believe there are three things that you can look at and know right off the bat if there's something wrong. We're talking about three things that you can look at the ductwork and say, yep, there's an issue here and so on. We're not gonna get into all the specifics of how to size the ductwork and things like that, stuff that the pros should know and all that good stuff, but just some things that you can just immediately look at the ductwork and say, something's not right here. And so that's my goal. The first of those three things is I've heard it said that the majority, and I don't know what the percentage is, but the majority of ductwork residential in homes across the United States is not properly sized. It's either too big, too small, usually too small, and it's not sized properly. And obviously if you don't have a ductulator and you don't know how to figure all that out, I believe if you're looking at that ductwork, that one of the obvious things that you can look for is does the ductwork sort of what I would call step down? So in other words, if you have say a system and coming off the supply side, you have you know your ductwork and as, as branch lines come off that ductwork, it should step down so that way the static stays high enough to continue to push velocity to those rooms that are a little further away from the heating and air unit itself. And so I call that, you know, a sort of a step down. You might come off the end of the unit with say a 16 inch round pipe and it might step down to a 14 or even a 12 and so on as it gets further away from the unit the smaller that trunk line should get. And I believe you should see some sort of trunk coming off of that unit and then those branch lines coming off of that. We'll talk more about that in just a moment. The other thing that I would say, if you're just, again, just taking a peek at that system is number of vents in the home. And as far as the sizing goes, I've been in homes where it doesn't necessarily matter how big the room is. You've got a six inch run to the bathroom, just like a six inch run to the largest room in the house and so on. And you just got all these six inch runs, they're all the same. And it may sound like common sense, but we see it every day. We see ductwork that's been installed and it's all the same size and it doesn't really matter what the size of the room is. It doesn't take rocket science to understand that a larger room needs more air than a smaller room. So if you're looking at your ductwork and you're noticing that, you should either see larger ducts going to larger rooms or more ducts. You know, so you might have for example, if you have a space that you want 200 CFMs, you might have two six inch runs or just one eight inch run. So I hope that helps. The second thing is getting back to the ductwork. I've seen it multiple times where we call it sort of a spider system. I think in some parts of the country they call it an octopus system. But basically where they come off the end of the unit and they just set a plenum or a box and they just bring all their ducts off of that. It just looks like this mess where you just see this box with boom, 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 all these ducts coming off of that one box. The problem is if you do that, there's no way to balance how much air is going through each duct. Air is just like water in a plumbing system. It's gonna find the path of least resistance and blow out that way. So obviously we don't wanna see that, but the other thing is if you do have a trunk line coming off of your unit, you don't wanna see a duct coming off the very end of that trunk line. In fact, we usually come back a few feet. So imagine you've got this trunk line that's coming out, it's stepping down, just like we talked about in the first thing, but then you get to the very end and it should be capped or it should stop in some way, and you should not see any of your branch ducts coming off towards the end of that. They should be backed up. And you might say, well, why is that? Why does that matter? Imagine a straw. Imagine, you know, imagine I've got a straw in my mouth and I'm just blowing through that straw. So 
okay? And air's coming out the end of that straw. It doesn't matter how many holes you put in that straw, the air will still go out the end of that straw right past those holes. Now, again, you might get some air coming out of those holes, but it's just gonna go right through the end of that straw, right? So the idea is, if you were to cap the end of that straw, so if we just put a piece of tape over the end of that straw and then put our holes in there, then you blow, now you have a more balanced system. It's got the static pressure to be able to push through all the branch lines. And as long as everything sized properly, it is now balanced and it will distribute air properly throughout the home. So that's number two. And then the last one is very easy. If you look at your heating and air system, the return side, so if you're looking at your indoor unit and you got your supply side and you got your return side, your return side ductwork should look, appear significantly larger than the supply side. So I, again, I'm not getting into all the other ins and outs of ductwork. Uh, I'm sure there's guys that'll comment on this video that could maybe give you a few more tips, but ultimately I know there's different parts of the country that use different materials and it's better in this environment or that environment. So I'm not getting into all of that, but again, I don't care what part of the country you're in, your return air based on static pressure and airflow, your return ducts should be larger in general than the supply ducts in almost all cases. So I hope that helps. That's my three. If you are a homeowner, you're not really a pro, you haven't really taken any classes, you're not sure exactly how to balance the duct work or know if there's an issue. I think if you just look for those three things and if one of those things seems off you'll obviously know that maybe you should get a second opinion that maybe that heating and air company that's telling you everything's right even though you got one room that's getting hotter before the rest of them or whatever you'll know that something may be off and maybe you should get a second opinion please subscribe and thanks for watching the last thing I'll say is if you're in the market for a new heating and air system and you're in Virginia in the Middle Peninsula or the Northern Neck, give Griffin Air a call. We'll give you a free estimate and the best warranty in the area. But if you're not in our coverage area, check out my new website. I've even got a little banner up here, newhvacguide.com. Check out that site because we've put so much information on there. It's as if I wrote a book telling folks, hey, here's the good and the bad, avoid this or that. I've even got a whole page called no-nos, things to stay away from. And so before you spend thousands, check out that website. And finally, for more tips and tricks in the heating and air industry, click that subscribe button. Thanks for watching.